Hi all, welcome to another LFMA Sport and Forward session. Today I'm pleased to have with me Mr. Nicolas Hemken for this interview. Welcome Mr. Hemken. Um, he's working in the private sector as an investment manager. The company he works for is um, active in sustainable investing. One of his hobbies is basketball, where he's truly engaged as a treasurer of the Luxembourgish Basketball Federation. Nicola holds a master degree in uh, climate change, management and finance. It will most probably not surprise you that he is running as a candidate uh, for this year's election on the, in the Green Party, the Green. And uh, we may clearly state that Nicolas is a subject matter expert when it comes to sustainable finance and ESG related topics. With the recent uh, natural disasters, global warming, climate change is more than ever a topic which is hardly discussed. So maybe let me directly jump into the topic and ask you my first question, Nicolas. What is the climate transition and how big is the opportunity? First of all, thank you for providing me for this opportunity um, and thank you for this warm introduction. Uh, climate transition, uh, decarbonization at zero, uh, as you may call it, uh, is the move away from fossil fuels uh, to, uh, in an effort to decarbonize the industry and to get more renewable models, more circular models, and in an effort to uh, reduce and combat emissions that are the, the problem behind uh, climate change. Um, more broadly speaking, eventually, we are all aware about the Paris Agreement from 2015, uh, where 193 nations have committed to uh, roughly half their emissions by 2030 um, and to reach net zero emissions by 2050, uh, meaning there will be no additional uh, emissions on a global level. Uh, this is, of course, uh, an ambitious goal. Um, and it presents a vast, uh, an enormous investment opportunity, uh, roughly 9.2 uh, trillion, according to a McKinsey study, um, which is 7.5 percent of global GDP. Um, and today we are at 3.5 uh, trillion only per year. So it presents a large opportunity, and uh, I believe uh, uh, politics plays a key role to enable uh, this transition as well, and to foster more investments into this uh, sector. You mentioned uh, reducing roughly carbon emissions uh, by half uh, in 2030 and to reach net zero uh, by 2050. Is that realistic and um, for Luxembourg and also for emerging countries? Mm -hmm. That's a tough question because indeed recent reports uh, have shown that uh, a report from 2022 actually that uh, we are not on track today globally to uh, reduce our emissions. Uh, so in fact, uh, uh, they are still higher than they, they, they should be. Uh, and also, I think uh, this year in, uh, in May, we have reached record levels of uh, CO2 uh, in the atmosphere. So it's uh, uh, a strong battle to fight, but I'm convinced we will get there. But first, let's look at maybe some facts. Um, half of the global emissions come from uh, the top eight countries, uh, including the US and China, uh, and three quarters of uh, the global emissions come from the top 20 countries. So it's indeed a problem that we may think only concerns uh, those large and global emitters. If we look at historic emissions, uh, more than half have been emitted by the US and Europe, um, so developed countries. Um, a little more than 15%, I believe, uh, are emitted by, or have been emitted, sorry, historically by uh, China and India, and only 3% by Africa. So. Uh, only a fraction has been emitted by uh, developing countries. So there's, of course, some debate uh, to what extent uh, these developing countries should still have the right to pollute, maybe, eventually, um, as opposed to developed countries that uh, should help them to decarbonize. Now, looking into the future, of course, uh, there are some hopeful signs. For instance, uh, over the first half of 2023, uh, China has been the largest investor into solar panels uh, or solar energy, um, as they have spent more than half of uh, the global investment uh, into this uh, solar sector came from China, uh, and two thirds uh, of global investments uh, uh, into offshore uh, came from China as well. Um, 
let's also mention uh, the African country. There's a lot uh, continent. Sorry, there's a lot of potential with regards to solar. Um, so that uh, the opportunities is there, are there, the technology is there, um, and uh, with uh, the Paris Agreement and the NDCs coming into play, uh, I am convinced that we can reach this. Uh, more precisely about Luxembourg, uh, eventually, <laughs> I mentioned before, uh, the global pollutants, we may seem very small uh, indeed, but we should never forget that we are one of the largest financial centers in the world and that we have fast capital flows uh, coming to Luxembourg. So, and I believe in this case, um, we have a, a, a large opportunity to uh, play a global role here uh, through regulation, <coughs> through uh, domiciliation of funds and incentivizing them to invest more into uh, decarbonization or into the climate transition. And this is an, an opportunity uh, we should grasp. Um, this, from a global perspective now, Luxembourg as a country, of course, have, has also more efforts to make. We are on track uh, with regards to our national climate plan and uh, with regards to reducing our emissions, as are most European countries. So even though there is a global trend that is increasing. In Europe, uh, we are facing a downward trend. We are doing our work. Um, but at the same time, it's a question how we can solve this on a global level. And uh, Luxembourg can play a big role here. Speaking about the financial sector, how can Luxembourg influence this topic from your perspective? Yes, I think there are three main levers, uh, which include the regulation, uh, fiscal policies and active investments. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we are one of the biggest global uh, fund domiciliators and as such uh, we have uh, some mechanisms to, uh, that come into play. Um, we are thinking a lot about the tax abonnement uh, in, in, uh, in French uh, that uh, we could indeed uh, decrease for um, um, funds that are investing into climate friendly projects. Uh, that's the way we want to use more actively um, in the coming years. Um, in addition, uh, there should be some type of information that uh, uh, is shared with investors, uh, so more transparency in the sector with regards to investments uh, uh, that are made by institutional but also retail investors, kind of like a, K a KIC, uh, the standard documentation that you get to assess your risk. This should also assess uh, the climate friendliness uh, of uh, investment products. I believe, in addition, uh, there are other countries like uh, Germany, France, they have all incorporated uh, climate funds. So I believe Germany, they, they call it the Global Climate Fund. Uh, uh, they have put aside two billion uh, to invest into climate friendly solutions uh, on a global level. So I think here also Luxembourg can, can take an active role uh, to, to invest into dedicated solutions that help uh, uh, reaching uh, the climate uh, targets. Um, there are other mechanisms. We have the International Climate uh, Finance Accelerator, uh, where we select fund managers, emerging fund managers. Uh, uh, as a government, we could uh, provide them with the uh, first lost trenches or, or similar mechanisms, uh, provided that their management um, um, comes to Luxembourg, uh, eventually as a, as a counterpart for providing such uh, incentives. <clears throat> then we could also uh, think about taking active uh, positions uh, in uh, startups that uh, are tackling these topics. Uh, so, so there's a lot to do. Um, and I believe we have the potential as Luxembourg, I mean, we have the talent uh, in the past, we had the talent to reinvent ourselves uh, as a financial center many times. And I believe this climate transition presents the perfect opportunity to do this once again and to, to make the necessary levers to become a leader in this space as well. Uh, I forgot maybe to mention as well, we have the, 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 the the Bourse in French, uh, that uh, is a leader as well in, in, in uh, screening or labeling green bonds. Um, so they have a platform where they only um, um, show green bonds. So it's kind of a certainty for investors that the end product is green. Uh, and similarly, we have other labeling agencies uh, that provide similar solutions for equity investments as well. And these are also very useful tools uh, for investors to get comfort uh, and for Luxembourg, uh, again, to reinvent itself and to position it uh, at the leading front. More generally, Nicolas, um, what are some investment strategies that align with net zero goals? And how can investors effectively integrate environmental consideration into their portfolios? 
Um, this is probably where ESG uh, comes into play. Uh, ESG meaning environment, uh, society and governance. Uh, and it means for investors that during their investment processes they look at additional considerations than just uh, financial considerations. Uh, for instance, E could mean carbon emissions or if the company is aligned with the Paris goal. Uh, S could mean some uh, minimum wage criteria. Uh, and G could mean some diversity criteria. So incorporating all these factors into, into their decision-making processes. And then there are a few gates or different approaches that are possible. For instance, some investors, they approach it only from a risk perspective, meaning they look at these ESG risks and whether or not it presents a, a risk to their investment. Um, th this is probably more passive approach, but better than nothing, because I guess there are still investors not looking at it at all. Um, then there are some screening approaches, uh, for instance, or, or exclusion uh, uh, ec approaches that would exclude certain polluting sectors uh, from the investment portfolio, such as uh, oil and gas is, is the most cited example. Um, then we have uh, some positive screenings, in fact, that are uh, looking at uh, factors that contribute more positively uh, to, to a better outcome. Um, that eventually translate into to best in class as well, uh, which would in the portfolio select uh, companies only with the best ESG scores, so the most performing on these uh, elements. Uh, and then there is, I guess, as the last layer or the, 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 the best you could do is uh, being an impact investor, meaning investing actively and only into uh, sectors that positively contribute to the climate transition. So this, this could be renewable energy, circular economy, agriculture, water, so all the, the big sectors, uh, impact sectors that uh, positively contribute to this, uh, to this uh, climate transition and uh, net zero goals. Uh, in terms of products, of course, or asset classes, there are different approaches. I mean, it depends on if you are a credit investor, equity investor, if you have a mix of both in your portfolio. Um, so to generalize, it's more complicated, um, but these are the, the, the most cited example that uh, investors should use as an approach and then it depends on their risk appetite, their willingness to diversify. Um, but of course uh, I would advocate uh, for the most positive strategy and uh, eventually for impact only. And it's important to mention that such impact strategies uh, more recently um, it's been academically proven that uh, they do not come at the expense of return generation. So it's possible to generate competitive returns uh, when doing such uh, impact investments. Now, just with that question, um, we often hear about this uh, famous word greenwashing. So what is the risk of greenwashing um, in general? And that's a very important question also to mention because what happened recently is uh, that there has been the, the European taxonomy trying to uh, define more granularly what sectors are actually sustainable. Uh, now, this does not avoid, of course, uh, that the retail investor is a little bit lost into translation, uh, as I always say, um, because while it may be very clear now from a, or more clear from a regulation perspective what is actually sustainable as sectors, um, there can still be investment products that have some type of denomination, but then in the end they are not aligned uh, with their effective strategy. So for instance, if I mentioned before best in class, um, so maybe best in class fund uh, is marketed to an investor as being the best in ESG, which is technically not wrong, of course, but eventually the investor expects something like exclusion policies, eventually not have being invested into oil and gas or uh, anything that, that we may imagine, um, but this is not always the case. So. Um, indeed, there, to me, there is some risk here, uh, and thus the importance also to um, solidify the, the, this work and to, to have a common understanding what this can mean. And, and back to what I mentioned before, like an, a fact sheet as well that, that describes uh, in a trusted way uh, what the investment product is about. In your opinion, Nicolas, is it more effective for investors to engage with carbon intensive companies to promote change or to divest from them? And how can politics support these strategies? Mm -hmm. And that's a, a trick question, I would say, um, because of course both approaches are not opposite one to the other, but depending on the activism of, of a shareholder, one may be better than the other. Let, let me explain maybe very briefly what we are talking about. So 
Um, engaging means uh, uh, using your shareholder rights after you invest it uh, to influence uh, the strategy of a company. So imagine a big uh, oil and gas company. There are some activist investors that buy bigger stakes in these companies than to actively block or vote on certain decisions uh, during the AGM in order to positively influence the direction of the company. So that is more an advocate for change within a polluting company. Um, the other way around, or more extreme, is divestment, uh, of course, um, um, where in theory, if you screen out all polluting companies from your portfolio, they would not attract capital, their shares get devalued, uh, or at eventually they face uh, some distress, uh, thus uh, incentivizing them to change before this happens. Um, so to me, uh, it depends as well a little bit on your profile as an investor, what you can accept to have in your portfolio, what you do not want to have in your portfolio. Uh, of course, uh, I am more an advocate of uh, having the, the most positive portfolio possible um, and eventually to use a, a, a divestment rather than engagement. But of course, engagement has as well its validity. For instance, uh, I would today not really want to invest into a new coal project or gas project or um, oil and gas project, uh, the, the, despite the power that uh, engagement may have. Um, how can politics help? Of course, I think governments can uh, implement policies that make it easier uh, to engage with uh, companies. Um, they can also provide incentives. Uh, we talked before about the tax d'abonnement, but uh, incentives or others that encourage investors actually to go more into this direction. Um, and so I believe it's uh, very important that um, politics plays an active role into this uh, to incentivize uh, decarbonization strategies uh, for investors. Beyond the financial sector, um, is Luxembourg on track to reach net zero objectives and how do they compare to other countries? Yeah, th that's also a very interesting question because Luxembourg has its very own situation, uh, importing a lot of its energy uh, and also if we look at the carbon footprint per capita, we are among the highest uh, globally, eventually. Um, this being said, we have uh, recently uh, incorporated a very ambitious climate plan. Um, and if we look at the European objectives, we're actually on track on an absolute perspective to meet our uh, climate reduction goals. Um, now, this plan has more pillars. We can talk about uh, energy, energy efficiency, electrification and, and carbon pricing. Uh, briefly, which are all the most important concepts into such uh, climate plans. Uh, when we talk about renewable energy, uh, Luxembourg today has a share of almost 15% uh, of renewable energy in its final energy mix. Um, we are still probably on the second half in Europe, uh, but at the same time we have done a lot of important work in the last years. We have more than quadrupled uh, this percentage uh, and it is very important that we do not stop here uh, and our goal is to get to 25% by 2030. There's also progress in energy efficiency uh, in buildings and so on with goals to um, reduce primary energy consumption uh, by something like 40-45% uh, by 2030. Uh, another pillar is uh, electrification of uh, transportation. Uh, we have an absolute goal of uh, electric and hybrid uh, vehicles that we want to have registered in Luxembourg. Um, and uh, as a last uh, pillar, maybe we should talk about the carbon tax that has been uh, installed a few years ago, sometimes controversial, especially in uh, times where energy prices are higher, but at the same time it's uh, necessary to, um, or it's a very important tool, let's put it this way, uh, in, in this uh, entire goal to reach net zero. So. Uh, Luxembourg is uh, today uh, on track to meet its goals, like other countries indeed. It's now probably difficult to compare countries like for like uh, because we are in this uh, special energy uh, import situation. Um, we have in addition, when we talk about imports invested into offshore wind projects in, in, uh, in the Nordics, uh, that uh, also allow us to do some more active contribution in uh, places in Europe where wind conditions or solar conditions, uh, in this case wind of course, are better than in Luxembourg, um, uh, rather than forcing it on our field, but also in Luxembourg we, we need to increase our capacity and uh, have ambitious goals to, to reach our net zero target. 
Well, thanks a lot, Nicola. This was very interesting. Um, as I say, we see that you're clearly an expert in this topic. So thanks a lot for coming and uh, for these exhaustive uh, answers, which are very interesting. Thank you. Thank you a lot for having me, uh, and I'm looking forward to our next discussion on Spot and Forward.